hello friends welcome to another tutorial in analog electronics in today's tutorial we'll talk about a very important topic that is bjt configurations a bipolar junction transistor can be configured in three different ways and the easiest way to remember uh, the configurations is what i'm going to explain in this video so if you have problems in identifying the configuration of a transistor in a network you should be able to do that without problems after watching this video uh, before we go on to identify the configurations in a network uh, we need to remember some key points and I've mentioned those key points as the ones that you need to commit to your memory so these are super important points the first one being uh, the arrow goes from P to N. Now, what does that mean? If you look at the uh, transistor itself, you'll find that uh, you'll you'll either get a transistor like this or you'll get a transistor like that. Uh, in this transistor, the arrow is going inside this straight line, which is essentially the base, and this transistor, the arrow is moving away from the base. Now, what you need to remember is that the arrow always goes from P to N and the other transistor terminal um, f from this end would be P again. So this becomes a P and P transistor. And for this case, uh, the first rule again follows the arrow goes from P to N. So this becomes P and this becomes N and this will remain the same as this one. So you'll be able to identify the transistor in just one second that whether it's a PNP or an NPN transistor. Um, by the way, uh, NPN transistors are uh, mostly used because of uh, the carrier mobility. Electrons have higher mobility than holes. So that is the reason why they are used more often than PNP transistors. And the second important point is that the arrows side is emitter so if you look at this transistor uh, the first thing that you establish is that this is p and p you know this is the base and out of these two terminals you're confused what is emitter and what is collector so the one with the arrow is always emitter so this becomes base and this becomes collector and the one with the arrow is the emitter this becomes collector and this becomes the base so within no time you'll be able to identify that which terminal is which so the second rule is super important the uh, the terminal with the arrow um, it doesn't matter if it is going towards base or it is moving away from base and that terminal with the arrow will be the emitter now let's come to the third point that you need to remember about bjt's uh, in their configurations is that the base can only be given input so and the collector can only be given or you know taken output from so output is always taken from collector or in other words you can say collector can only be used to take output because if you look at the third point emitter can be given input or output so emitter will make the things a little confusing because we get two options for output and two options for input but emitter can never be sorry collector can never be given an input and base can never be um, you know used as to take output so this is very very important point and now let's go to the third point here the fourth point here now whenever you uh, consider or see dc voltages in ac analysis of the bipolar junction transistors you you consider them analogous to the ground so that will be that will make things very very easier for you i'll i'll show you the trick as to how you can you know figure out what configuration is that but if you look at these two transistors again you'll find that uh, the arrow goes from p to n this becomes p so this be this is a p and p transistor and this is emitter 
this is base and this is collector so the first thing is super easy so this is emitter this is collector this is base and the arrow goes from p to n so this is an npn transistor so within no time you can identify this now having uh, understood these uh, three key points to identify what transistor is this and this fourth point to uh, figure out uh, whether it's a common base or a common collector or a common emitter so let's look at this configuration here first things first um, you need to identify what kind of a transistor is this so arrow goes from p to n so this becomes n this is n this is p so this is an npn transistor of course this is emitter this is collector and this is base now if you look at the fourth rule i just bring it back fourth rule says whenever you see a dc voltage in ac analysis you consider or you treat it analogous to ground so what does that mean now let's see now you see that <coughs> This is one DC voltage if we consider it as analogous to ground in AC analysis we see that base is connected so our base is connected to input and ground right so now let's look at collector our collector is connected to input uh, sorry output and ground again and emitter is the one which is connected to ground so what's the common thing between uh, these three bases connected to input and the other one is ground collector is connected to output then the other one is ground and emitter is connected to ground so oh, what's the common factor amongst these so that becomes a common so third one is the common emitter or the the biggest trick of them all is uh, you need to identify where the input is you need to identify where the output is and the remaining terminal becomes the one which is used for common configuration so this is the common emitter configuration because ground is common to both base and collector so and this ground is attached to emitter by the way so this is common emitter so on on the similar uh, tune uh, let's look at the second configuration of course this was ce we established that now if you look at this the output is now connected at emitter by the way this is again p to n arrow goes from p to n so this is npn this is emitter this is collector this is base so if you look at this configuration now let's analyze where the input is input is between base and ground output is between emitter and ground so what are we left with collector is you know treat this as ground so collector is connected to ground via this resistor so we could say that this ground is common to both base and emitter or the other trick is leave the input and output the other terminal is the one which has the common configuration so this is common collector easy so we need to identify which terminal has the common ground so here collector had the common ground so i'd say this is a common collector configuration and now let's look at the third configuration here again the arrow goes from p to n so this is again an npn transistor this is emitter 
this is base and this is collector we know that input is connected to emitter and or in other words emitter is connected to input plus ground output is connected to collector output is collector and in other words collector is connected to output and the ground and what are we left with we are left with base and of course this VBB uh, it's DC voltage so I'll treat it as ground base as just ground with it so base is the common factor between input and output and the common factor is ground or the other trick leave input leave output the third terminal which is left is the one with the configuration so it's a common base configuration so in this way you can easily figure out what kind of a configuration is there in the transistor and even if you have you know transistors in cascaded form you'll be easily you know if two transistors are connected uh, with each other you can easily figure out that the first one is common base the next one is common emitter or whatever so i hope this uh, quick tutorial on the uh, identification of the configuration of a bipolar junction transistor was of help uh, if you liked the video and you want me to make more videos uh, like these uh, leave a comment and consider subscribing to the channel that would be a great help and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and have a great life ahead bye